Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Mindy here today for Lawn Vaughn and I'm going to be creating a card using the new Magic Picture Changer and the add-on and I thought it would be really fun to have my scene change with this picture changer. These are the stamp sets that I'll be using today. I'm going to be using the new Butterfly Kisses and the Little Fireflies stamp set. I also have the Magic Picture Changer and add-on die. So I'm just going to be starting to take off the pieces that I'm going to use right away. I'm going to start by creating my scene. And since I love to double stamp my images, I wanted to use my Misty tool. And this is how I was able to do it. So I'm going to use uh, Lawn Fawn white cardstock for everything. I lined up that first die, which is the larger one, onto my Misty. When I was playing around with this, I wasn't giving myself enough room towards the bottom of the card, so I thought this was easier for me to be able to line up where my image is going to go. Now, this is totally by choice. You don't have to. This was just easiest for me. And by lining that die up in there first, I was able to make sure I stamped my image so I had room to cut out my scene. So once I had my cute little bunny where I wanted it, I'm just taking the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and stamping that down, and I did it twice. And this is Copic Friendly ink, since I will be doing a little bit of Copic coloring. For my first scene, I'm going to have the bunny uh, just kind of looking up towards the sky, towards these cute little butterflies. There's a few different sizes, and they're at different angles, which I thought was really cute that the bunny is looking up watching these butterflies flying around. So this is going to be my daytime scene. And using the Misty, I was able to stamp all of them at once, which was really nice and handy. Since I need to do some masking, I'm bringing in some masking paper, and I'm going to stamp those butterflies right away. They are very tiny to cut out, but I thought it was totally worth it. Next, I'm bringing in my other piece of white cardstock, and I'm bringing in that second die for the picture changer. Once again, lining that up, making sure I have enough room to create my scene. And then I'm going to stamp my bunny again. And I do end up stamping it twice just to make sure I have some really nice black lines. I really wanted the bunny to stand out against my backgrounds that I'll be creating. Then I can uh, bring in the little fireflies, and I thought this was just really super cute. These are so small. Granted, there's only two of them. So I am going to start by stamping two of them first, and then I'm going to clean one of them off, or clean them both off, and I'm going to bring them back in to stamp the third one so it matches my scene of the butterflies. And while I had them on there, I did go ahead and stamp them on that masking paper as well. So I have my three butterflies, my three fireflies, and I just need one bunny. And then I'm just showing you here, I cut all of my pieces apart and then I'm going to fussy cut around them. Now they are fairly simple. They are small, but they're fairly simple. So this actually was pretty quick to cut them apart. And here are what they all look like once I have them, the masks cut out for them. Now I'm going to start by doing some Copic coloring. For my bunny, I do use the same colors on both, so I'm only going to show you one of them. I started off with E35 as my darkest color. I decided to go for a cute little brown bunny and I just put some darker areas on the left hand side of the bunny and then I'm going to blend that out with E33 and then I'll do E31 and E30 as my light lightest color. So I added that shadow on the left hand side a little bit on the ears the top of the head so like my uh, light source is coming in from the top right is what I was envisioning my sun to be shining down on the cute bunny. And then I do typically color my images twice just to get a nice blend and to really deepen up those shadow areas. That's total preference. That's just how I choose to color and I just really enjoy that look. Once I have the bunny all colored in, I just come in with R81 and R85 for the ears. I do use that for the nose, and I end up adding some cute little cheeks to the bunny too. For the butterflies, I did BV02 and BV00. The dark, darker color, BV02, I just did a little bit from the body, and then I flicked out towards the wings. So there wasn't a lot there to do with them since they are tiny, but I just thought those two colors went well together. 
And then for my nighttime scene, I did already go ahead off screen and color the bunny since I colored it the exact same way. And for the little bums on the fireflies, I used YG17 and YG03, so it's a nice bright green. For the body, I'm using V04 and V01, and I added that darker color to the outside edges of the body, and then blended out with the V01. And for the wings, I did a really light color. I did B01 and B quadruple zero. Really made these little fireflies uh, colorful. Now that they were all colored in, I did go ahead off screen and apply the masks to my images. And I'm just taking a small blending tool and I'm applying tumble glass. This did take me a little bit to work out because it is such a light blue, but I didn't want to come in with a real dark blue uh, just because I really wanted there to be a significance between the two scenes. And then every now and then I'll bring in that die just to make sure I have coverage everywhere that's going to be seen when I die cut that out. So I'll clean up my mess there and my brush. And then I'm going to come in with Twisted Citron. So this is such a pretty bright green to add to this springtime scene. And I just blend up a little bit into the blue so that there's a nice transition between the two. And I decided to come in with some mold lawn just a little bit on that top edge, right where the blue is meeting the green. And I thought that was just a great contrast. And so then I'm just slowly peeling away the masks, revealing my cute little purple butterflies. Once in a while, I'll use the tweezers to kind of try and pick that up. You just have to be careful not to scratch your images that you colored. So adorable. And this this reminds me actually of like those old storybook pictures in school. <laughs> just a, a pretty blended scene. So I'm taking that same mask of the bunny and I'm applying that to my nighttime scene one with the fireflies so I didn't have to cut two masks. This time I'm starting off for a darker green, so I'm using pine needles. Since this is a nighttime scene, I went with a little bit darker of colors. Blended that at the bottom. And then I'm going to come in with chipped sapphire. You don't need a lot since this is kind of a small area to work with. And the chipped sapphire was just a perfect nighttime scene color. So I'm blending that all around and into the pine needles. And then once I'm happy with that, and I have coverage over everywhere that's going to be seen when I die cut, I can go ahead and remove the masks for these. And I think that is just so sweet that these scenes are changing and it's going to go from a daytime scene to a nighttime scene. And you notice I didn't cut masks for the antennas because that would be almost impossible. <laughs> so you could go over them with a black marker if you wanted to darken those lines back up. Once my scenes are ready, I'm going to start doing the die cutting. So I'm taking my first scene, which is the daytime scene, lining up the bigger of the picture changer die. I'm going to hold that in place with post-it tape and run that through the die cut machine. So it's going to cut all of those slits in there, which is going to make the picture changer possible. And then I'll take the nighttime scene and I'll be taking the smaller one, line that up over my image, kind of figure in where I want everything to be and hold that down with post-it tape and run that through my die cut machine so I'll have my two pieces ready to work with. So here's a look at everything die cut and I'm going to just start folding along all of the scored lines. So the top there I'm just folding over this has the slit in the middle so we can slide our second piece in and I'll use the lawn fawn bold folder to just give those lines a nice crease and what I'm doing the side, I know it's hard to see, but there are score lines on the side. So I'm actually taking my fingernail and kind of pushing that in a little bit. And then I can come through and crease them with my bone folder. So on the other side, same thing. I'm just kind of pushing in on those lines and then giving that a nice crease. Once those are good and folded, I'm going to use the new Lawn Fawn double-sided tape. So this really is a perfect size tape for this. What I'm doing is just taking that double-sided tape and I'm lining it on the inside edges and the outside edges 
of those scored lines that I had just created. And this is very easy to tear. So once again, flipping that over, adding a strip of that double-sided adhesive. And this is actually going to be the track of where our sliding mechanism is going to go. So just pushing that down really well. And then I can go ahead and remove the backing for the inside pieces and push that down. So we're just working on the inside right now. And then I'll take an anti-static powder tool and I'm just running along those lines and across the die cut slits too, just to make sure that my picture changer uh, moves freely, that it doesn't stick. I actually do this a couple times throughout it just to make sure everything moves real smooth. So now we can start working on the assembly of the interactive portion. And once you do it, it really is easy. So I took the strip and I slid that through the slot on my first die cut piece. And this front panel is going to pop down into the second panel. And I know it's, I'm sorry, it's hard to see. I didn't have a good angle shot on this. Kelly has a great introduction to this, but I'm pushing that first strip down and it's going to just slide into the ones underneath. So you can see just one by one, I'm going through and just sliding those into the piece underneath. And I just kind of play with it, make sure that everything uh, is in there really good. And then I'm pulling it, giving it a test run, and it really is magical. I love watching these. And actually throughout the video, I, I play with it quite a few times because it's just, it's so awesome to watch. So once I have that in there and it's running smoothly, I can go ahead and remove the backing strips on those inside pieces to seal up our little pocket here. And then I just keep playing with it, moving it around. And that is just so super cool. I love it. And then I'm going to take that powder tool and just rub that over my pieces again. The more you play with it, the easier it is uh, to get those to slide through. So now here for the background, I did go off screen a little bit and I was arranging some paper and my dies. So I am using the Spring Fling paper pack. All of these pattern papers are from that pack. Now the dark green paper that you see, I actually die cut that from the large four bar rectangle die just to have the stitching match the rest of my card. Now here I'm adding some adhesive to that frame to attach to my panel. I actually used too much adhesive. My picture changer still worked, but when you are attaching that frame, if you decide to use that on your card, you only want to put adhesive in the corners. Otherwise, it may stick and your picture changer won't move up and down as freely. I'm adding the tab to the top, which acts as a stopper when you're moving the slider. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this attached to the front. So like Kelly had showed, I'm just adding adhesive to the corners. And then I'll add a strip of adhesive just on those short edges too. That way it's not going to catch our slider piece and it's not going to hold it up or make it stick. And just adding that right on top still works great, which is perfect. You can see I just can't stop moving it. <laughs> and then I can add it to... The rest of my card. Now for the base, I am using some new fog cardstock. This is such a really nice light color. It is so perfect if you just wanted to add a little bit of contrast to your card and not have it stark white. So I am adding this green pattern paper on top. And then I'm going to add foam tape to the back of my interactive portion. This just helps so your finger can get behind that tab and you can pull it. Uh, my kids actually started playing with the slider cards and I should have probably double layered my foam tape because they're kind of bending my tab there a little bit. But one layer is also just fine and works well too. So I'm just trimming these down to fit the back of that slider piece. I like to trim my foam tape in half to make uh, kind of custom strips what I need for sizes. And all my extra foam tape you can see I stick right back on that roll and those really do come in handy to save those. So I'm going to remove the backing of that foam tape, add it right to the front of the card. And I just, like I said, love how all of these papers coordinate so well together. 
Now for the sentiment, I am going to stamp a sentiment from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set. And I, I stamped it quite a few times on different colors of cardstock. And I finally decided on cilantro cardstock. I thought it was a nice contrasting color to the dark green background that I had. So I heat embossed that sentiment in white embossing powder. Die cut it out with the Everyday Banners die. And then I'm adding that to the front of my card with some foam tape just to give that a little bit of dimension. So I was really happy with how all of those colors came together. And there it is, my bunny switching from the springtime daytime scene to the nighttime scene with the fireflies. These are so much fun, really easy to do once you get the hang of it. And there's so many different ideas that you can create with it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and my tutorial for it. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you next time.